Welcome to Accept Your Gifts, the 22-minute podcast for inspiring your most creative life. My name is Tracy Crow. I'm an author, writing coach, and Marine Corps veteran. I'm looking forward to co-creating today's show with you. So if you're ready, are you ready? I'm ready. So if you're ready to live a more creative, more magical life, let's get started. My special guest this week for a two-part series is Tina Kivett. I first met this remarkable woman four years ago when mutual friends Sam and Novella Kennedy invited my husband and me to their place, Earth Visions, for a winter evening bonfire. Tina was there, along with others from our little community, but Tina and I became fast friends and spiritual soul sisters. So I was thrilled when Tina, courageous Tina, agreed to join us here this week to share details and revelations about a fairly unusual experience. You see, Tina embarked on what Native Americans refer to as a vision quest. And today, for part one of this series, she'll explain why, and she'll reveal how day one of her vision quest was the longest day of her life. Tina, thank you so much for driving over today to talk with us about this remarkable vision quest experience that you had nearly a year ago, right? Yes. It Gosh. actually will be last year, Easter weekend. Oh my gosh. So, don't know the, can't remember the exact date, but um, it was, it was almost a year ago to the date. Wow. So, so this is perfect timing. I love yes. this. <laughs> okay. Well, what I know you haven't forgotten are all the details about this experience. But before you go into those details and what this Vision Quest experience was all about for you almost a year ago, will you tell our listeners first what a Vision Quest is? Well, I'm sure there is a great explanation, um, definition, written somewhere. I do not have that great explanation. What I do know is it is a Native American ritual ceremony that I think is kind of a rite of passage Mm. that originally the um, young boys, um, I don't really know if girls did or not, but why not? Why couldn't they? Hopefully they did. I hope so. I know. Um, so I think is, you know, a rite of passage that the Native American guys, boys would go through um, as they're entering adolescence mm-hmm. to kind of set um, their intention for their life. Oh. So um, it um, they would leave their tribe and set out into the wilderness on their own. And I don't think there was a set time period frame. They just kind of maybe wondered until they felt it was time to return. I don't really know. But anyway, it's, it's a Native American ritual. Mm, you know, it, it almost feels biblical in the sense of Yeshua wandering the desert. Yes. Wow. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so this Native American ritual, and you're off by yourself. That means no cell phones? No cell phones. No. <laughs> oh my gosh, how do we exist without cell phones? All right, so tell me, how does one know one is ready to experience a vision quest this Thing, the ceremony that you're going out on your own. Yes. So if you're not a Native American child that's going through this certain rite of passage, and you're, let's say, a 50-some-year-old 
white female <laughs> that is just wants to soak up as much life as she can you um you get as they say a calling you uh. it it just it speaks to you and it calls you and for me personally it was just i knew i just mm -hmm. knew that it was that time in my life that I was ready. I knew mm. I was ready. Well, ready for what? I do not know. Do I don't, I, hmm. I didn't know what I was ready for. Uh, I just, um, that's, I don't know the answer to that. But... So why did you think that the answer or the calling was necessarily the vision quest as opposed to say anything else? Um, you know, that's a good question. And I, I, I'm not sure the answer to that question either. Um, Sam Kennedy and Novella Kennedy, who, um, were my teachers, my friends, my, um, everything for the past 15 years. I met them 15 years ago. They run the Earth Visions business. Mm hmm um, which includes a lot of different Native American traditions and learning and um, fire making, fire building fire skills. Making. You have your fire making badge or something like that. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, sweat lodges, right. you know, drag us out into the woods and the blindfold the challenge. The blindfold challenge. Yes. yes. We've talked about the blind. You were with me on the blindfold challenge yes. New Year's Day. Yes. Yes. So they do these things that are sort of disguised as let's go out in the woods and have fun. <laughs> They're not kidding me anymore. I'm on to them now. No more of that. Um, so I met them 15 years ago because I was at a point in my life um, where I was in a marriage that was falling apart, crumbling in front of me. And I didn't know how to keep it together. And I didn't really know that I even wanted to keep it together. Mm -hmm. So... I was, when you seek something, it comes to you. It Ooh. will, it will come to you. What you seek, if you seek it from your heart, it will come to you. So in, um, certain pathways, I was led to Sam and Novella and started off exercising and running, which I hated, <laughs> um, but I still did it. And so Sam would sort of mention every once in a while, a vision quest, Tina, Think about a vision quest. And I knew that he did a lot of and vision quests for people and led them. And um, he would ask me periodically from time to time. And it did not appeal to me. It did not call to me. And he told me what it was. And I said, well, go have fun. See you later. Not for me. I did a 24-hour quest um, a few years ago with some other friends. And I, it was okay, but I can't really say that it, no, I shouldn't say that. It did change me. They all do. They all change you. Um, but even after doing that, I really did not have a strong desire to stay any more than 24 hours. I was pretty much glad to get back to my car and to my home and, and for it to be done. But I still learned great things in that quest. So to help our listeners understand the overall concept of this when we talk about 24-hour vision quest per a normal vision quest, we really want our listeners to understand at this point that this is a four-day, four-night alone in the wilderness, right? And yes. there's a prep time leading up to this. And so it's really about a week-long commitment of time, if I'm correct. Correct, yes. And But the real key element, besides all the prep, which I'm dying for you to share with us, what you're allowed to share without killing me here in, in my home, because um, I know some of it's probably secretive, <laughs> <laughs> but it's four full days and four full nights all alone in the wilderness not seeing another person, not having a cell phone, total detox of technology, and it's a different type of sensory overload, I would imagine, right? 
It's a total isolation. Okay. You okay. are totally isolated from people, technology, comfort, um, food. Oh, so that's right. There's no food. There's no food. There's only water. Right? Yes, okay. just water. And salmon novella are amazing at nurturing and preparing. And what is very important is that you are prepared before you head out there. In my normal way of moving through life, I would normally say, okay, I'm gone, see you in four days, <laughs> and not prepare myself properly. But Sam will not allow that, and there's reasons. So we actually went out into the woods at their camp on a Friday, which was Good Friday. And Friday and Saturday, Sam prepared us in every way that he possibly could um, mentally. We would prepare, we, we picked out our site in the woods, which you, you go out and you let it, again, you let the site call you. You, you wander through the woods and you just go out with just a feeling of where am I supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Where should I be during this time? Well, let me stop you just a second. So Sam and Novella have this amazingly breathtaking, what, 55 acres of property. Yes. Pristine. Um, and you go out there and you choose a site. Now, I'm one of the lucky few who has actually seen that site. Mm -hmm. I saw it on New Year's Day when we were out there. Um, and I was mesmerized by the energy I still felt from that sight and from and I got all emotional watching you reunite with that site but what was it about that particular location and if you would describe it for our listeners how large a site uh, what do you maintain in terms of distance that is your quote unquote your location and site but more importantly just what was it about that particular site that called to you I actually picked my site before I got there. Mm. I've been on the land a lot. Okay. And I've walked the land a lot. And I'm very familiar with the area of the land that we were going to be questing in. So I knew the lay of the land. I knew I'd been, I knew kind of how it felt when I'd been there previously. So when I'm at home and I'm already preparing, because because your quest starts when you say yes, mm -hmm. when you decide to do it, when you um, make that intention and you make that commitment, that's when it starts then. So in my mind, I was kind of already scanning the land and kind of deciding where I thought I would be most comfortable which was maybe not the best way to pick the site. I, if, so when I went out, when we went out to pick our sites, to wander, to feel, um, I knew where I didn't want to go. Okay. Um, I knew what didn't feel good to me when I had been on the land before. So I picked this site that was up on a hill a little bit. Mm -hmm. for, for some reason, to me, being higher felt better so I, I picked a site that is off off the trail so that no one can see you and you can't see the trail because they walk the trail a couple times a day to make sure you're you know everything is okay so I being there before I was I just thought it was very pretty um, I don't know it kind of spoke to me that site being there for so that was the site that I picked. And you you pick out um, a 10 foot, I think, 10 foot area that you are kind of confined to. Okay. Um, so you want you kind of look at it and make sure there, um, there are 
trees that you could sort of lean up against or um, not dead trees around that are going to fall on you if the you know storm comes through or something because you, there's no shelter. You're you're not in a shelter. You're just um, in a sleeping bag or a blanket. And, and we're going to go over that in a second about what you actually are allowed to take out there with you. But I love this sense of choosing the site, being up on this hill, this knoll, and uh, and this 10 foot diameter or so, and I know what those trees look like. Was there something in particular about those trees that drew you that just said, yes, this is the place? When I was wandering around to find it, I found an a turtle shell the the turtle had he was no longer there but he wow. left his shell behind so as i was going walking around i was kind of looking for signs you know give me a sign that will kind of tell me yes or no this is this is correct this is not correct and so when i t saw the turtle shell i took that as a sign that mm. this was home home <laughs> it was going to be your, <laughs> home. your little home for the next <laughs> four days so um when i found that i, I decided okay this is it this is this it. is it this is home for yes. the next four days four days four nights <laughs> four days and four nights all right now you're allowed to take out there what water okay so you take water mm -hmm. you take a sleeping bag or a blanket to keep you warm you have a tarp in case there's a lot of rain and you need to get under because um, if you get wet you don't want to sit there wet for four days so you have a tarp and I want to say maybe a change of clothes um, or extra clothes if you are cold at night okay <clears throat> that's okay. it um, if I remember right didn't it rain we had just a small amount of rain. Okay. We were actually blessed with good weather. So just a very small amount of rain. But it was fairly cold, wasn't it? One morning it was, it had gotten really cold overnight and the next morning it was pretty cold. But during the day it, it warmed up very nice. It was actually really good weather. Okay. All right, so you've been prepared mentally by Sam and Novella and you've been allowed to eat in the days before the official vision quest begins for day one, but you're going out there with nothing but water. Why do you think that's part of the ritual and important, the fasting? Uh, one reason is, and I asked Sam this question, what I've never been four days without food. But actually what it does is it gives your digestive system a break. Mm. So your digestive system gets to take four days off and not have to work. Also, you, you ha being without um, comfort will force you into a place that you haven't been before. Mm. It's all... Now... I would like to make this point that every person's vision quest is their quest and every quest is different for everybody. Just it is comes from their perspective, what's going on with them. It so everyone's quest is completely different. Um, it's kind of the same dynamics around it, but what comes from it and what happens during the quest is as many different as there are people. Mm, that's so, a good point to make. So yes. everyone's experience will be unique. Yes. So I would like to make that clear that my, my words are from my quest. From your quest yes. experience. Okay. Yes, from my quest experience. And I forgot what the question was. <laughs> I forgot what you asked me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're in day one. Well, we were talking about... Oh, let's oh why up. there's no wait, food. Wait, why there's no oh, food. Oh, why there's no yeah. food. Okay. We're both hungry. Yeah. And we have Chinese food it's downstairs waiting for because us. Because <laughs> I agreed to do this because you promised me Chinese food. And that's distracting me because I can smell it coming up the Chinese donuts. 
Um, so you, you have to, or I, I wanted to get to a place that I had not been before. And to get to that place, I had to do things that I had not done before. So including this fast, including, yes, including letting go of all comforts, letting go of food, letting go of, um, family, letting go of all distractions that come from everyday life is, is actually a huge sacrifice that you do because you are sacrificing time that you would be doing other things, you know, spending time with family, eating good meals, watching good shows on TV, reading. There's no reading. You cannot take even the labels on your clothes. You, they, you know, you have to, so that you're not distracted by anything physical in the, from the physical world. And so it seems to me that what would have happened then is when we deprive ourselves willingly of all of these wonderful creature comforts, and I know how close you are to your family. We'll get into that in a minute. So I know that's a big sacrifice. (laughs) And it was probably a huge sacrifice for them to see you go out there and not be able to just text or call or whatever for four days. We'll get into that in a second. But I would imagine that this sensory deprivation of that allows you to transcend and to have, let's say, a metaphysical experience so that you're able to really maybe tune in and hear things and feel things that we aren't able to, you know, in this everyday world when we're bombarded with radio frequencies and distractions and texts and everything else. Am I getting close? Yes. Okay, yes. I'm getting close. All right. So there's a frequency that comes from the earth. There's mm-hmm. a frequency, frequency, a high, very high frequency that comes from Mother Earth and the soil and the trees and nature. And that frequency is what is missing so much in people's lives. And when you get four days of touching the earth and the soil and the dirt and the leaves and the trees and four days, because there's not a comfy chair to sit on. You have no choice but to touch the earth for four days. And when you do that for four days and you get in tune with that pure Mother Earth natural frequency, there is nothing else like it. There's nothing else like it. Now, I will say, you don't get that, or I didn't. I shouldn't say you. I'm going to start saying I. I didn't get that as soon as I stepped my foot inside that circle. As soon as I got to my quest site that morning and I stepped inside that circle, I was immediately like, go God, no. Um, what have I done? Why did I, why did I agree to this? You know, why did I sign up for this? And, and it was almost immediate self doubt and second thinking. But what is so great is Sam had already prepared me for that Mm. so that I, when I felt that I knew that I was okay, that it would pass. Otherwise, is, if he hadn't prepared me, I think I would have um, probably bolted because wow. it was it was overwhelming almost immediately. Really? Yes. Almost immediately. Yes. So can I tell you this story? Yeah. Okay. So I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the morning you walk out, you walk out at daybreak, mm-hmm. which is which was on Easter Sunday, it was the morning that we walked out at daybreak to our sites. So we're at camp the night before. Novella has nourished us with the most wonderful food Mm. just because she makes it and her hands are magic and she's just magic. And so the food is extremely nourishing, which is the last food you're going to get for four days. Um, So you 
walk out to your site and it's almost like the night before a big race when I used to do races and you're so this nervous energy going you can't sleep the night before you're just like okay hurry up sunrise come on let me get this let me get started let me get started and because you've been preparing already for two days to right. do this and so you're just ready to do it and you're like Sam that's it don't not tell me anything else I'm ready let's go <laughs> And so I'm heading out on the trail. And there are two other people that are also doing the quest at the same time I am, but they're in different sites. And I don't see them and they can't see me. We don't, we can't see each other. So I'm walking down the trail and I've uh, already got my site prepared. So I'm basically just walking into it. Everything is already there. And I'm walking down the trail and I am feeling just like, you know, like badass. I'm like, yes, I got four, <laughs> four days in the woods, nobody can get to me. I'm just, I am going to relax and chill out and just get a good suntan because <laughs> nobody can see you. Right. So what does it matter what you have on, which or a lot not. of times you have nothing if you want is <laughs> whatever you want to do. I, exactly. So I am feeling good. I am pumped up and I am getting to my site. And so I get there and, and I walk into my site and I stand there and then I'm like, oh, God, I'm because now I'm in it. I'm in it. You know, I've stepped into that the circle. Ten foot yes, circle. I've stepped into the threshold right. and I've committed to it. Ooh. And I'm I made a commitment to myself, to Sam and Novella, to the universe, to yes, that, you know, I said, I, I, I wanted this. I'm ready. And and it took um, several hours to come to grips with it, and then it is is were those long hours? No, was long, that first day? So I'm not sure if it was for. It seemed like forty days, honestly, to wow. me. To me, that was that was my experience, right. and time seemed to stand still. I, I did so many crazy things trying to figure out what time of day it was that I became obsessed with the time and um, it, the days were so long. They were so long and you sit for a while and then your butt gets tired and your back starts hurting and you move to this tree thinking it's going to be more comfortable. And you lay down and you get up and you walk and you, that's, you know, that's Are you singing? It. Are you chanting? You're Are cursing. You, you're cursing. You're singing. Okay. <laughs> you're you're um, talking to yourself. You're talking to people that are not there. You're talking, to, you're cursing Sam and Novella. You're um, crying out to your family. Yes, every and that was just day Ram. one. That was like five minutes. <laughs> five minutes after I'd gotten there. Oh my gosh. And then, you know, you're like, how can I do this? And then you start counting out, okay, how many hours are in four days? Like, <laughs> oh, and I'm like 10 minutes in now. And, and how minutes. can I, I can't maintain this brain activity like this. I'll be insane by the time this is over. So it is like a realm of stuff that flooded in almost immediately the minute you crossed the that minute threshold. I stepped because I stepped in and then it was you know like what do I do because I'm usually do this do that do this good here go ahead go there you know active all the time and to just have be forced to have to force myself to be still and I mean I couldn't even walk through the woods you know I'm confined to this this very small area, which got smaller and smaller. And the only time you can step out of the circle is to go to the bathroom. Right. So you, you really hope you have to go to the bathroom just so you have something to do. <laughs> like, you know, just I'll pretend just so I can step out of this circle for a little while. And like, you know, you think you're going to get in trouble. Like there's, you know, they have a drone over your head looking at you, think, what you're going to do. And at one point I smelled smoke in the background like in the um you know landscape or anyway someone was burning brush or something anyway I smelled smoke coming over and I even thought 
oh, thank God, there is a forest fire and the woods are on fire and Sam's going to come get me. I'm going to be ready. Let me get let me get my shoes on because I know the woods are on fire. Thank God somebody started a forest fire and he's going to come in here any minute and tell me, okay, you can leave now. That didn't happen. Oh my God. That didn't happen. So now that our listeners have made vows that they will never do a vision quest. <laughs> we will get to the good stuff for a minute. There really was some good stuff. But this is that first five minutes. Five minutes in. And it feels like hours. Yes. This is that first five minutes of remorse almost. Like remorse. Buyer's remorse. But, yes. <laughs> quest. Quest remorse. Remorse. Okay. Ah, we have to stop here today. But return Thursday and discover what happens to Tina on days two, three, and four. And to discover what gifts Tina feels she's accepted from this incredible, life-changing vision quest. I hope you enjoyed today's co-creative listening experience. Please remember to leave a comment about the single greatest takeaway for you today. You know, that one thing you will remember from this day forward. Was it something funny or provocative? Was it just what you needed to hear? Please share so we can all benefit. And remember to return Tuesdays and Thursdays to Accept Your Gifts, the 22-minute podcast for inspiring your most creative life.